Welcome back to the Football Terriers. Hit the like buttons, subscribe, turn on the bell notifications as well. Big transfer updates as we go into the last two days of the transfer window. And I want to start, uh, we're going to start with Manchester United. Ugarte has successfully completed his medical. The deal was already done. It will now complete. Remember, done deals and completed deals are not always the same thing. And I am very, very excited indeed about this one getting over the line. He doesn't fix Man United's midfield. He doesn't complete Man United's team. He isn't the final piece of the jigsaw. However, he is going to be a very much needed, highly competitive, very athletic, very mobile member of that midfield that's going to help protect that back line. Defensive duels for days, stamina for days. I am so excited about him becoming part of this Man United midfield. The upgrade on Scott McTominay from a central midfield perspective is absolutely night and day chalk and cheese. So I am personally very, very happy indeed about this deal. The squad still needs a lot more over the coming years. Still a long way for Ineos and Dan Ashworth and Barada to lead United back to where we want to be. But if this is the last piece of business, a very good piece indeed. In other news, Manchester United are willing, and this comes from the brilliant Dean Jones, are willing to hand Raheem Sterling a £150,000 per week contract if he is prepared to switch to Old Trafford and settle for becoming a squad player. Now, yesterday we saw the report from Fabrice Hawkins. There was a total agreement. Sancho wanted Juve. Juve and Man United had agreed, and that deal was going to push on ahead. However, that has been pushed back against by the likes of Fabrizio Romano and Jacob Steinberg. They believe that the player is still considering Chelsea. He hasn't rejected them as of yet, as per other articles we spoke about on Straight Facts yesterday, and there could still be a chance he moves. However, Man United would have to agree to take Raheem Sterling. Now, Man United have an interest in Raheem Sterling, but the offer we have made is you'll be a squad player, and that you'll be on a maximum £150,000 a week, which is a £200,000 to £250,000 a week pay cut for Raheem Sterling. This, in terms of Man United being involved, it now appears that it's whether or not Raheem Sterling accepts or rejects Manchester United's offer. That is how this is reading at the moment. If Sterling accepts the huge pay cut and squad status at Manchester United, as opposed to rejecting us, then there is the possibility that Sancho goes to Chelsea. As per the new reports, and that's what we do here at the Football Test, we report on what the news says. But I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on that. Is that a good bit of business for Man United? Chelsea fans, a lot of you yesterday when the news from Fabrice Hawkins came out in our comments sections, but we don't really want Raheem, we don't really want Sterling, can't speak. We don't really want Sancho. We, he's not really the player for us. He ain't that great. He doesn't get into our first team. Have your minds changed now that the reports are that this deal is still on, still active, and could end with him accepting your offer and rejecting Juve? Give us your thoughts and feelings in the comments section below. Now, staying with Chelsea, Fabrizio Romano has stated that it is completely on Chelsea for Osimhen. Forget about everything. It's all about the salary and Chelsea. They are not giving up and are trying everything. What we know is Chelsea are also, according to Sky Sports, is they're looking at alternatives in case they don't land Victor Osimhen. Now, this report slightly confuses me. I don't see how it's all on Chelsea. And, and let me explain this. It would be all on Chelsea if Victor Osimhen accepted and Napoli set a price. Then it's all on Chelsea to bid that amount of money and complete the deal. I think we would all agree on that. What I don't... It's on Chelsea from the perspective of, based on Fabrizio's report, that if they make an offer that is acceptable to Osimhen, he'll join them. But that still means the ball's in Osimhen's court to a certain degree because he still has the final say. But Chelsea have the opportunity here of signing a great striker. And my interpretation of... Who's in control, who's not in control, I think is secondary. If your opinion on it is secondary. 
This is about Chelsea, in my view, doing enough to sign a top, top striker. If Chelsea make a respectable, reasonable, and sort of market value offer to Osaman, he will turn down the offer from Saudi Arabia and he will become a Chelsea player. That is my interpretation and reading of these stories and of these articles. But Chelsea fans, what do you want your club to do? I can't see Osaman accepting 100k a week. I can't see him accepting £150,000 a week. How much do you believe Chelsea should offer? How far over their wage structure budget of that kind of 150, 160 do you think they should go? Let us know in the comment sections below. I'm very, very, very intrigued indeed to get your views and opinions on that. Aaron Ramsdale has com it will be completing his move to Southampton. £18 million initial fee, potentially rising to £25 million after add-ons plus a sell-on clause for Arsenal. And look, Arsenal, have, I think, have raised 30-odd million already. They've got the, they're going to get 25 to 30 million in for Enketia. They're getting 18 million here. I think this is all phenomenal news. Phenomenal news for Arsenal in terms of now going out in the last two days of this window. There's very little noise surrounding them at the minute. But they've got this extra bit of money in now. They should be going hell for leather. Hell for leather to go and sign a top forward or a top striker to complete their summer transfer window. Now, I was actually looking at it here. They've raised enough money. 31 million so far. It will rise to 61 million with Eddie and Ketia. This deal is going to put it to 70, nearly 80 million. Plus, they've loaned out Fabio Vieira, Nuno uh, Tavares, Lokonga. They're all going to have loan fees. Okay, they're going to range between two to five million pound each. They nearly always do. Plus the salaries that they're saving. They've raised over a hundred million pounds through sales, plus what they're saving in the salaries. And as we all know, net spend isn't real. It's not how clubs operate. That 100 million pound could equate to two, three, four hundred million pound of spending on additional players because you spread the cost over time. However, you don't need to spend that much. Nico Williams available, 49 million euros. Osaman available, 65 million euros. Yulkares, between 60 and 80 million euros. There is a possibility to sign one, if not two, of those individuals. But what do you all think Arsenal are going to do? Let me know. Let me know in the comments section below, my people. Now, I want to give a final update uh, today. Liverpool. Liverpool have been thinking about signing uh, Federico Chiesa for a long time, not just this week. Richard Hughes has... Really good knowledge of Italian football, according to Fabrizio Romano. And we had such a great debate about this on Straight Facts yesterday. Is it good? Is it bad? And I, I, I do believe in trying to be as less polarised as possible in life. I've got both Mo and Hussam's arguments. I think in isolation, it's a good deal. I think overall, it's a terrible window for Liverpool. Especially as I think they're going to be in the title race to a certain point but probably fall off due to a lack of overarching depth compared to Arsenal and, of course, the fantastic Manchester City. But I have a gut feeling this deal might go very, very well for Liverpool. I just have a gut feeling. Maybe it's fear and worry and concern as opposed to belief. But often in life, people say you should go with your gut. It's like a second brain in many ways. So and that's legitimate. <laughs> I read that so on, on a health website. Anyway, how do you all see this going? I want to gauge your opinions. I'd love to garnish this content with your views and opinions. Chiesa to Liverpool. It's going to happen. It will be a deal. It will complete according to all the reports we're reading. But Liverpool are briefing the media and stating this is not a knee-jerk transfer. This is a player that we have liked and respected and followed for a long time. And we believe now is the time to strike to bring the player into Liverpool to help us and to rectify his career. Give us your thoughts. Give us your feelings in the comments section below. We're back for the top six show later, which is also going to double up as the draw for the Champions League as well. So make sure you're all back 5 p.m. on the football terrace. Take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon. Peace.